God's beauty is all around us. And my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. I'm so glad you could join us today. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and if you'll remember from our last episode, we're in Ireland right now. Um, and on our last episode, I did a painting of uh, Leap Castle. I sort of blocked it in, and um, it was, you, you know, it was, it was a pretty good start, but it still needed some finish work. So I, I took the, uh, the unfinished painting back to my home studio, and I've worked on it a little bit more and brought it more to finish. And now I'd like to show you what Leap Castle uh, looks like now. So here it is. This is uh, Leap Castle, as you can see. I have intensified the greens, and I've given the stone a lot of, of um, knife work to make it seem very old and textured. And I, I pretty much did the whole painting with the knife because it just gave such a, 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 a feel of wildness and abandonment. This is the castle that belongs to a gentleman um, that he is slowly but and gradually rebuilding uh, this castle, refurnishing, refurbishing it, or however you would say. And but you know it, it's so large that most of the castle is in ruins, and he and his family live in a very small small part of it. And but I told you all about all that last last uh, episode. So anyway, that's that's Leap Castle. And now today we are going to go to the Grand Canal. The Grand Canal begins at the River Shannon, excuse me, it flows from Dublin to the River Shannon. And the River Shannon is the longest river in Ireland and it divides the east from the west. And because there was no way to, for, for the people in the 1700s to get commerce back and forth across the country from the east to the west, they built these canals. And so this is c considered the Grand Canal. Believe me, it's very tiny. A little later on, I'm gonna show you a photo and uh, explain a little more about it. But what I, what I did this this time is I wanted to bring you something that you really had an idea of where I'm going with it. Um, this, um, this scene absolutely touches my heart so much. I have such good memories about being there. And it just is so, so quaint. This building over here that we're seeing just a little bit of right here, it was a great big block, you know, uh, building. And uh, um, a little further um, uh, to the right was where the, the lock actually was. And this was before the lock was opened and a boat passed through. Um, but anyway, as you can see, here's the boat shed and the, the fence. And then there's this um, area right here that seems like it's metal, covered with metal. And then from here down, it's all reflection, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, you see, you can see that there's a lot of things that I haven't really addressed in the painting, such as flower pots and flowers and um, uh, the greenery dripping down and the little blue uh, bobber. Or um, I, I think that hangs there to keep the boat from scraping on the metal on the side there. This boat, believe it or not, is still in use. Um, that's why it's tied up right now. 
right uh, here. So anyway, I'm going to be putting the finishing touches. I wanted to. I wanted you to understand what it's like for me to finish a painting instead of always starting them for you or working in the middle of them. Okay. So without further ado, let me get let me get started here. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to take my knife and I'm, I'm working with a, a rather limited palette today. I don't have all the colors that I usually use out um, because I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to try something a little, a little different that would maybe um, be a little more true to life. Okay, I'm gonna take this and with my knife, and I'm gonna put it right here in the corner there, and then right along here. Now remember, I'm putting finishing touches on this. So it's going to be a matter of, of um, little accents here and there to show what it looks like, what it's gonna look like completed. I do see there's a, like a little window or something there. Let me see if I can make that with my knife. Okay, boom, there we go. And then I'll take a brush and go back over that and there. And then I'll put a little light on it. And it's just supposed to be a little window or something right, right there. Clean it up a little bit. There we go. And I have to hope I've got the angle going the right way. He, up in here, it seems very uh, light. There's some light right there. And there seems to be... I love to work with knife and brush, and there seems to be a little bit of light that is right on the very edge of the roof, that red roof. That red roof just really does something for me. So I'm going to take just a little bit of, on my knife here, and I'm just going to come along here like so, and just bring that up just a little bit there and a little bit right in there. Okay, now I might go back. I don't want it to be so bright everywhere. There we go. That kind of gives that a little bit of oomph. All right, now then, we do have a, well, while I'm in the red, um, let me get this metal to look more like metal. Seems to me that there is some grayed part of it here. There is a, there is a light area there that is There's like a little area there, and then um, that I believe that you could walk along right here on that, okay, and it's, there's some greens and things, and so, okay. Um, trying to get just the right color for that. Okay, now like right here, it seems like it's very bright. Now we don't want to do a a whole ton of detail on this because the the part of this that is is um, unique is the fact that that we want it to stay rather rustic looking rather than having a real finished now you see I'm jumping from here to here 
because I want to put this greenery in and have this little blue buoy in there. That's going to add just the right note to bring the sky color down into the painting. And it'll be echoed, the sky will be echoed down here in the very bottom of the water a little bit. We don't see much of the canal because of the fact that the shadows, the cast reflections rather, the cast reflections are so light, I'm um, visible. Hmm, sometimes it's very hard to paint and talk at the same time. So if I say something that doesn't make a lot of sense, bear with me, I'll try to clarify. Okay, now right in here, I didn't have the proper size canvas. And so I looked through my old canvases. You know, every artist has a ton of old canvases that they have started and not finished. So I looked through them and lo and behold, I found this old canvas that I had painted and I had, did not like the way the painting turned out at all. And so I took, I took the canvas and I scraped all the ridges off and I just painted over it. And you can't even tell that, that underneath there is another painting and that works really well sometimes. Now this over in here, I'm seeing, from where I'm standing, I'm seeing a little bit of glare. And I think I need a little darker uh, and a, a little better movement in there of a vertical movement in order to make that go back a wee bit because it's a lot, of, a lot of brush strokes and it seems to want to be coming forward. So I'm mis mixing up a really nice dark. I'm using my Payne's Gray and my Liz and Crimson and I'm gonna take a different brush and come in here and, and really darken this. To set that back a little bit for us. When I did this preliminary painting, I did this in two or three hours, I think it was, just in my studio as I was getting ready for the show. While I was painting it, I was remembering the fantastic time that I had while I was in Ireland. I, I had taken about 20 students over painting students, I'd led a workshop to Ireland. And one of the days we decided to paint at the Grand Canal. Now, as I told you, the Grand Canal is about one of the only ways that people that live on the east side of Ireland can get over to the west side to get to Dublin to sell their wares and all of that. And so the boats pass through there. We were on, the, we were all, it must have been about 20 of us, we are all on the shore on this side over here. Okay, this would, we would be looking at that. We are all on the shore and we're painting away and and uh, pretty soon there's a bridge over in this area here that comes off of this house. This is like the lock keeper's house here. There's a bridge and people come out and they tell us to get back because there's a boat going to be coming through. Now, you know, what we would think in America of a canal 
and what they have in Ireland. And mind you, this canal was built in the 1700s, okay. Um, what we would have in America and what they have over there is two different things. So we're all there painting and then this boat comes and we're all excited and, and well, let me show you a picture of it. <laughs> You're gonna love this. Anyway, the, here's a picture of what the canal looked like when, uh, before, the, before the boat came, okay? And you can see that it's quite, it seems quite narrow. You can see the boat I'm painting there uh, in it, and you can also see more of the building. And anyway, and then here is another picture showing what the boat looked like coming through the lock. It was amazing because there was barely enough room. And so up above on the bridge, there were, there were two men and they would call down to this man on the boat. He was carrying driftwood or, or wood of some kind, firewood, and he was taking it down to the River Shannon. So anyway, he, his boat just missed the sides of the lock by inches. And when they started to let the water come in as they were emptying it where he was sitting in the lock and they let, let the water come in, there was a lot of roaring and foam and everything. And it was really, was really kind of cool, really, really interesting. So anyway, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty tight. Can you imagine all those people all those years that used that as their only means to get their stuff to market in Dublin? It's pretty interesting, I think. So anyway, when I get down here to this water, I want to add some of that foam and everything that I saw. Yeah. Now, let's see here. Right about here, we have something that looks like a little tear in the, in the metal there. I don't know what that is. A lot of these things, I don't know really what they are, but I'm gonna put them on there. All right. Now then I need to refine my, my fence here and I'm seeing a nice, I'm trying a different color today. I'm trying brown matter, M-A-D-D-E-R. It's really kind of a red color, kind of a brick red. So this is coming here and here, and then right about here, Right about there, we have, whoops, not enough paint on the brush here. I'll just get a little bit more. And I'll have to come back in and, and fix that. I don't want this to be crooked. I'm trying to be very careful not to be crooked. I have a hunch that because on camera I always paint from the from the, uh, the side that I, I don't get things straight up and down like I should. Okay, so this is gonna go right here. Okay, and then right here, we have the end of the, the fence post and there's a little bit of red there too. All right, now the fence actually comes down a little bit. There's a little bit of a, right in here, that's showing a little open spot in the fence below. And let's see, we need to make some, 
texture here on the um, on this fence. Let me see here. Separate those boards. A little bit here. Now we don't want to do too much. We just want to suggest a little bit. Just, just a suggestion. There is kind of a dark cast shadow there. And there's a dark cast shadow right there and right in there. Okay, now let's see here. Okay, that kind of looks fence-like. Maybe we could have a little bit more blue. I see a little bit of a blue-gray on these boards. Let's have a little bit of that. Make them look a little, not quite so yellow. Just a little bit here and there to kind of make them look a little more fence-like. This is a little too wide. We have to narrow that down. Yeah, that's looking a little more like a fence. And as we can see along the top here, we have all these little, they're like little um, pickets. But I don't want to, you know, get into doing too much of that. So I'm just going to give it a little suggestion. I think that's good enough, sure. The heck. Anyway, so here we are, all, all are, and we're painting along the, the bank on this side of the, and you know, we're looking in this direction of the canal. And it was a cold day. We all had jackets and coats on. And Well, here, let me show you a picture of it. This is what it looked like. And you can see us all along the bank. And you can see the one lady down in the left-hand corner of the photo. Um, and she is, it would be your right-hand side. Anyway, and she's pretty close to the water. She looks like she might be having a little little bit of trouble getting up and down that embankment. The embankment was very steep. And anyway, she decided that she was done with her painting and was going to go to a different area to paint. And as she's coming up, she fell over backwards and she totally missed the ledge that was there. She totally missed that ledge and went right into, flipped over backwards, right into the canal. Now, the canal, the water in the canal was so dirty that it was like just, ugh, really, really, really dirty. And, and you couldn't see anything. None of us had any idea of how deep it was. And there we were trying to pull the lady out, um, but she had on her coat and a sweater and her clothes were all wet. And she kept, you know, she was naturally very frightened and she was screaming, help me, help me. Well, we were anywhere near a town or anything. And this was after the boat had gone through and, um, so the people there, they were, they were a handy. And it, anyway, it was a very, very scary situation. We did get her out, and she did go back to our um, 
we were staying at Castle Daly Manor, and she did go back to the manor, and uh, I don't even believe she came for supper. She was one upset lady, you know, frightened. Can you imagine being so frightened, being on a painting trip in a, in a foreign country, and you have something like that happen to you? My gosh. So I was so relieved that she was all right. I mean, I felt so responsible for her. You know, it's my painting group and my people, and I'm trying to watch out for them, and, and that happens. That was a very scary thing, very scary. But it all turned out okay, and she was very happy with her painting when she calmed down a little bit. And me, I was just thrilled that everything turned out and she was safe. And I think that's looking pretty good now. We do have some little um, they look like little boards that are keeping the building, this little boat building um, standing. So let me see here. Can I put this here like so? Okay. Little, it's a little light, but I'm going to go back in and tone that down a little bit. I just wanted to make sure that I, that I have them on there so that we can see what's holding that building up, you know. I'm really glad you joined me today. I, I, I truly am. It's a joy to be here doing what I love and sharing it with you. All right. This is going like that. And then we have one coming up like that. And then there's another little piece coming down like that. I might have to clean that up with a brush a little bit. And there's a little one coming there. I think this one's coming more like that. And a little piece coming here. Okay, now I'm going to go back in and tone that down. But at least I have an idea of where they are. But this seems to need to be a little bit lighter. There. And this seems to be a, need to be a little bit lighter. Okay, now we'll just take a little bit of that dark and I don't usually paint with such a small brush, but you know, when I'm doing detail, I almost have to in order to in order to um, get it to be the way that I would like it to be. I'll take my wipeout tool and just come right there and there and wipe that out. Okay. I need a little touch of the brighter red over here. A little touch of red right in there. And a little touch of, of red right here. Okay. There's some very bright orangey red right in here. 
All right. Now, um, let's see here. Take this and accentuate this dark that I have right here. The edge of that, and I may have to take my knife and make a new edge on the roof there so that it shows up the way I want it to. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, now along in here, right here, there's this, this, let me see here. Okay, we've got, we've got little tiny, um, marks coming down on this too. That's coming like that, and then there's little fence marks here too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then right in here we have, oops, we have some very dark green that is coming right here. And as soon as we start putting that green in, right away we can see that it's going to help a lot because we've got the, the green on top of the red. Yeah, the River Shannon is the longest river in Ireland. And it divides the east from the west, and it flows from the north down into, eventually, into the Atlantic Ocean. This kind of gave me kind of a funny sensation over there, like everything was just a little backwards because, um, you know, here in the United States, east means the Atlantic Ocean. Over there, West means the Atlantic Ocean. So I kept getting a little turned around with that. Let's see here, let's do a little bit more of that down here too. Okay, well that's looking pretty good. This guy here needs to be toned down a little bit. That's a little too light, you see that? He's just to be grayed just a little bit right in here. That little guy right there. We'll just gray him down a little bit. This needs to be a little grayer underneath here. And these fence posts in here. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit of the lighter green on the And I think we're going to bring a little bit more of that green along in here. There's some coming right down here on this one and here um, so we'll take the dark green. You always want to put the dark down first. And then we'll just have these, you know, kind of coming over here. And this is coming over this way here. And then there is green in here too. And where the plants are kind of growing over. This one here is coming all the way down here.
And that's some shadow in there. And we'll put some bright on it. That's one thing. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous, clear day. We had very little rain while we were there. The meals, oh my goodness. Everywhere we went, the meals were so spectacular. The people were so friendly. It was really on our way to this place right here. I don't know if I talked to you about that before or not, but on the way there, we, we stopped at this little, it was kind of like a general store. And I mean, it just had like um, oil and propane and all kinds of things, you know, all helter-skelter bottles of big, big gallons of bottles of water and all this stuff just kind of sitting around the front of it and all these signs on it. It was a real country-like general store. And uh, our bus, we were traveling in a small little mini bus as we would go from painting site to the different painting sites. And our bus driver, um, he stopped there. I think he needed maybe to get a drink of water or something like that. And he told the owner of the store who we were and what we were there for. And the owner of the store sent big a big bag of candy bars and snacks and um, back out to all of us, you know, as we were sitting there in the in the bus. And that was just so, his, and then he stood out there and he waved at us, you know, and he was so cute. He was like, oh, maybe about this tall and kind of round and, and he just had this little funny hat on and I guess it's kind of like a little flat hat that they wear over there. And he was just so cute, so charming. It was really, really just, you know, and you feel so special. Very, very special that you're there, and that you're able to experience these things. I remember one day we went into this uh, town, and um, we were doing a little shopping, and I was up in this bookstore, and here was this darling three little boys, and they had the most darling look about them. And so I asked them if I could take a picture. And first of all, he didn't look like he trusted me too much. And um, then uh, he said, oh, OK, you know. So I took his picture. And then his buddies came up, and they kind of said, like, what are you doing? I don't know. He must have been maybe. Um, eight or nine years old, kind of brassy young man. And his buddy said, what are you doing? And he says, I'm going to have my picture taken. I'm going to go to, my picture's going to go to America. And I thought that was really cool. He was kind of excited about it. And I still have that picture. In fact, um, one of these days, I'm going to do a portrait of that young man. If I had his address, I'd do the portrait and send it to him. He was so adorable, his red hair and his, and his wild, you know, red hair and his beautiful, humongous blue eyes. He was just adorable. All right, I want this to stay kind of cool back there. And I will put in a couple of those little fence posts, though, to kind of show that there's something back there. It's just a, supposed to be a little suggestion.
Hmm. Big moment of silence here as I'm reminiscing and enjoying what I'm doing here. I'm going to work on that tree a little bit here. Pump that up just a wee bit. We don't want it to be so bright. The boat, uh, I love the boat. That's so much fun. I wouldn't ride in it. <laughs> there is no way I would get in that boat. No way at all. But it's very quaint looking. Now we have a little bit of this, this cast shadow. Of course, it's a little bit darker now because anything that shows in the water is going to be just a little bit darker. And there is that little bit of soft um, on the bow there. We need to see that a little bit better. And then, of course, it is a little bit darker down here. I don't think there's a whole lot I'm going to do to the... Um, maybe I'll put a little bit of the gold in here for the fence that's above. So that we know that that is that fence. And this is the building right here. That's a reflection of that. So I think what I should do is bring that in and put just a little bit of the blue there and not have that be quite so wide. There we go. And I think I'll put a little bit more of the blue in here. Oh, it needs to be calmed down, Kitty. That's a little too bright. I always add a little tiny bit of orange or uh, cad red light to the blue to kind of dull it down a little bit. There we go. There. So that's that. And this green right here, this is, this is, should be quite a bit darker, I think, right in here as it's coming down because that's that, more of that roof. And I'm, I'm looking right in this area of the photograph. I hope that's not a glare for you. Right in there. It just should be just a little bit darker there. Okay, and so I'm seeing a little bit more dark right behind the boat here. And this is where the, the water line is right in there. And then this is the reflection there again. And that's the reflection of the green. We have a little, we have the little flower pot that's sitting right here. I need a smaller brush to do that. Now, the reason that I really love this little flower pot, and it's so opportune that it was there because it helps me to bring the bright reds across over to the other side of the painting, of which it is making the painting more cohesive as the red is being echoed in these other places. That's very important. Okay, and then I want to put a little bit of brightness on it. The sun is coming from this direction, so I'll put a little bright right here. There we go. 
And I need to put a little dark underneath it to sit it down. And, you know, you don't really have to put, I don't like to anyway, every little thing that's in the photograph. You don't have to put that in the painting. Otherwise, it's going to get so cluttered. I do want to have a little bit of dark down here. coming up and there is a little bit in here and that seems to me like it's going in the wrong direction and this back here this seems a little that seems a little too wide there that little bit of a of um, this needs to be a little I think a little more grayed for the little sidewalk there. And, you know, as my eye darts around and I look at different things, I see that this needs, this, this could be just a little grayer too. And this needs to come down just a bit and maybe have a little more grayness to it. Now, this kind of bothers me here. I know in my photograph, this is coming at an angle, and I had it at an angle, but I'm not so sure I like that. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Putting a little bit of yellow back there to yellow ochre to kind of soften that a little bit and maybe a little bit of the of a blue green in here kind of a a bit to kind of cool this down a little bit and cool this down as it's going back into the in the little mm, let me see here this really should be going all the way behind there I think yeah, there we go. That looks better. Okay. Um, we need our ropes on our on our boat. Mm -hmm. Now I do that with real thin, thin down paint. Roll my brush, and just kind of go like so, and so there. Well, this is the sort of thing that I made it too high because it's really not tied right there, so I have to kind of get rid of that. This board right here, we have to do something about the board. I'm kind of working a little bit faster now because I really did want to get be able to finish this for you today. Okay, this is that... board that is coming along there. It's a little darker in the middle, I think. It comes up like that. And then right here we have mm, sort of a dark like bush that's coming over and that makes a little rope there a little darker. It should be a little bit browner. <clears throat> right in here. And I think we'll just have a little bit of business right in here. And a little bit of this down in here. That's rocks right there on the side. And then we'll take a little bit of bright yellow, green, and put on this and make it look like it's a little more 
like it's a bush or a vine or something like that growing. Okay. And I did want to get, there is some lovely little purple flowers right in here. Um, let me see here. I'm mixing a little bit of my cerulean blue with alizarin crimson to make kind of a violet. Add a little bit of the red to it to make it more, have a little more of a warm feeling. And I think I'll just put a little a flower bush right in here. Right there. And then we'll have some, uh, I think we'll have some red flowers in that pot growing in that pot there. Ooh, that's pretty bright, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's calm that down a little bit. We'll put some green leaves in there and that'll fix it. And we'll have a little let's make this look like a little more like a bush here. take the um, the water's pretty well set so what I'm going to take now is I wanted to make it look like it looked to me when the gate was opening up and the water was gushing in so this is where it's 50 50 chance of a mess or a masterpiece okay so here we go most of the water was coming from this side here. Maybe a little lighter. Okay, a little bit more. It needed to be grayer. It was really quite dirty looking water. Maybe if I put a little bit of that violet in there, that would work. Okay, there. Mm. Is that working for us? It's not too terribly bad. I think I will have to do a few little touching up here and there, but it's, it's not working. I mean, it's not looking too terrible. At least I hope you don't think it does. I can put a little bit more on it. It seems like without the thick paint, I don't feel fulfilled. Isn't that funny? It's the truth, though. If I don't have a really well textured, thick paint on my on my painting, I just I don't know. It doesn't knock my socks off. 
And of course, I want it to knock my socks off as well as yours. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more here because this was really like coming around like this and coming down like that. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. The only thing I don't like, I'm gonna take this down a little bit. I don't like this right here. This is too much. So we'll just bring it down. And we'll just take um, a green brush and we'll come in. Maybe, I, let me see here, I don't know where I put it. Do I have it in my hand? No, okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, we'll scrape this down. There, you can see the painting underneath now. That's funny. Okay, and we'll just redo that very quickly now because I, I hate to say this, but we're almost out of time. And so we'll just put this like, make this like this. And, you know, I really have enjoyed my time with you today. I hope that you have enjoyed this trip along the Grand Canal with its narrow um, uh, passageways and narrow escapes. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed being with me today as much as I have been and I have enjoyed being with you. And I want you to be sure and, um, you know, catch the next episode where you'll get to see this painting all framed and I might make a few little touches on it, but not much. Maybe I'll just, oh, I love this. Look at this, just like that. We have some little poppies, just like that. You know, you don't have to go by what's in the photograph. If it doesn't look nice, do something different. There, I love it. What do you think? I love it so much. Maybe I'm not supposed to, but I do. It satisfies me. It makes me feel good. I want to thank you so much for being with me today and joining me on Painting Journeys. Once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klish, and I do hope that you will join me next time. And until then, bye-bye for now. Thank you.